welcome to today's video, which will be like a quick introduction to what are the options of, of mutual funds available on the Third World Stock Exchange. I don't think I need to explain what is a mutual fund because there are already thousands of you know videos about mutual funds. I don't want to repeat myself. You'll already see, you can already find like a bunch of tutorials on what is a mutual fund, what are the different types of mutual funds, what is the difference between an active mutual fund and a passive mutual fund, what are the different asset classes of mutual funds, because it's not just for equity, but it's also for bond markets. It's also for, I mean, REITs in a way is a mutual fund, right? So... You, you can get all these differences and et cetera, right? But today I just wanted to cover like a, give like a very quick introduction to what are the different mutual funds available on the third level uh, in terms of the different asset classes, in terms of the uh, exposure to different international markets and different countries, in terms of the uh, philosophy of investment, like whether it's a growth uh, mutual fund or whether it's a capital preservation mutual fund, et cetera, right? So let's get started. So let's go to the third level uh, website. I go to our markets, mutual funds, and here you will see all the different options that's that's available across different fund houses, right? So in terms of asset classes, you have equity, bonds, real estate, funds of funds, commodity. In terms of fund objective, especially for the equity, based on the, the stocks, you will have like a growth mutual fund or income mutual fund or the combination of both, right? It's more de derived based on the companies that the, the mutual fund is investing in. For example, if the company, uh, if the mutual fund is investing in a lot of uh, dividend giving stocks, that's like a more of an income generated, right? Where you, all most of the profit it's returned back to the investors rather than investing back, reinvesting in the business itself. Uh, the growth companies would be typically more of the mid cap and uh, lower bottom of the large cap because those are the companies which have more growth potential and therefore they reinvest a lot of their money back into their businesses rather than giving it back to the uh, investors. Then you have the fund exposure where it gives you a, uh, it gives you options of whether you want to invest in the local Saudi Arabia markets or in Asian markets or an international combination of different markets, etc. Whether it's Sharia compliant or not, which fund houses are you going with? There's a huge long list of uh, fund houses, SNB, Saab, Al Raji, the bigger ones, right? And you also have the fund currency. All right, so this is the whole list, and this is the exact one. So I let me now show you an Excel with this with this entire list and some additional columns which I was able to pull for each of these uh, mutual funds. This Excel is actually the same table that you saw on the Thudable website, right? It has almost 279 mutual funds over here. And yeah, you can select what is what. And I've added like a bunch of additional columns you know, just to give more context about what the fund is all about, right? Its latest unit price, what is the strategy behind it? Is it like a, what type of philosophy does it use when it's trying to select the bonds or whether when it's trying to select the region or selecting the companies, right? But the eligibility, who, who is it specifically for? There could also be like few mutual funds which is only relevant only for those uh, who are Saudi citizens, right? Uh, the fund categories, uh, subcategory, inception date, inception price, valuation, the objective, which is very similar, which will be very similar to the investment strategy. Then you have certain classifications, growth, it's preservations, uh, the region, currency, so some kind of details about the fees, like the management fees, the minimum subscription. This is actually one uh, a negative thing which I which I think of the Saudi Arabia and mutual funds, right? Like when I was going through it, some of these mutual funds have like a very high minimum subscription value. Minimum subscription value refers to the minimum amount that you have to invest, right? Every time you're investing, you have to at least buy 2,500 rials worth of, you know, units, right? Or uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty high for me. In India, the minimum amount that you can invest in a mutual fund is as low as 500 rupees, which is equivalent to 25 rials, right? So this is like a huge barrier for common investors like many of us, right? Which I think hopefully in, in the in the coming months and years, they, they try to reduce this. I do not know why they have kept it at such a high value of 2,500 and 5,000 rials. That's huge. That's a huge investment to do, you know, every month. If I have to do a, a SIP uh, every month, this is a huge commitment from myself, which I'm not comfortable making. Now, what is the average? The average is very close to, okay, there's a bunch of exception outliers here. So let me exclude... There are a few with ones and tens. What are those ones and tens? So most likely they will be the non-equity ones. Okay, there are equity ones as well. So let me go to the equity. There's a there's only a handful of them, but it's good to see. A couple of them are from Al Raji. And their minimum is 10 rials, which is good, which is very good. At least in Saab Invest, which I have the option of, more majority of them have like a minimum investment of 2,500, which I feel is very high. But what this is doing, Al Raji is doing a good thing of you know keeping it low so that it's a less of a barrier for a lot of common investors like us. All right, so let's go through each one of each of the fund categories for a while, right? So let me shortlist just the bonds for now, okay? And and just for simplicity, I'll just pick one of one of the fund houses, okay? So there's only one um one bond mutual fund by Saab Invest, which is investing up to 95% of its assets in the Sukuk approved internal Sharia bonds. It may invest up to 5% in the money market instruments. It's available for all. It evaluates themselves on a weekly basis. The fund aims to achieve medium to long-term capital growth 
in local and instrument uh, international bonds the fund will also invest in murabaha transactions and murabaha funds which comply with sharia standards it's a growth based mutual fund and it's focused worldwide so it's not just investing in saudi based bonds but it's worldwide bonds it's the usd the management fee is 0.75 and the wow the minimum subscription is 25000 riyals <laughs> no way i'm buying that okay what's the so out of the 279 what's the split across the different you know uh, uh com- amcs or the asset management funds are here what we call as the capital houses right so there's around 40, 39 40 capital houses i didn't know that it's uh, it's th- these many uh, to be honest but the bigger ones is snb alraji riyadh capital sab invest jadwa investment company saudi franci okay so these are the top 5 which almost cover 100 Yeah, one for one fifty, right? So it's almost fifty percent of them is covered by these five, right? SAB has twenty six equity bonds, which is good, which is like giving you a wide variety of options. That's a good thing to to know of. Alraji same around ten of them. SAB Invest has fifteen of them, and then uh, Riyadh Capital also has ten each in equity. So what's a mixed asset? What's the difference between a mixed asset versus a commodity or versus equity? Let's go back to, and and select a mixed asset. Okay, so there's three of them in SAB Invest. uh let's let's go through the philosophy of one of them right? the fund follows an investment strategy in mutual funds that comply with sharia and approved by the sharia invest most of its assets 80% of them in local regional and global funds and only 20% of them in the bonds okay so it's kind of like a mixed you know equity plus bond kind of a structure where 80% of that is getting invested in the in equity and 20% of them is getting invested into the bonds what about the second one the fund invest up to 55% into mutual funds and places the remaining into the bonds okay so 55 45 split and the third one is also something similar a 70 30 split to 30 split right and if i look into the fund objective the fund seeks to medium long term capital growth through investing in sharia sharia funds uh, capital growth through medium and long term capital growth capital growth so all these are cap- growth funds they are investing not just in saudi arabia but in the international markets it's open for everyone they have pretty lower compared to the overall average it's a lower management fees and the minimum subscription is 5000 around close to that as i was mentioning sab invest has like a higher minimum subscription which if any of the sab invest folks are listening to this video i highly recommend that you lower this you, know, you should learn from the alraji capital and uh, get this much lower than what you have and please add the automatic sip option on your website please for sip investors <laughs> all right so now let's go to the equity ones which is like which is the major chunk of it right commodity would be more around the raw materials or the agricultural raw crops and steel prior copper equity which is the major chunk let's go to maybe alraji or maybe snb capital because that's the biggest one right okay so we have a, we have around 26 of them and if i let's go through it's eligible for all, almost all the investors that's good sharia compliance is good let's select just the growth ones right How many are there? Twenty-five. Okay, that's good. Now, in geographic focus, you have different options. Okay, so we have uh, uh, for for this context, I'm only going to select the Saudi Arabia ones, which gives me eight options and eight growth-based equity funds from SNB Capital, and you can see like the different. You know, even SNB has like a higher subscription value, like five thousand, seven thousand five hundred, which is again not a good thing. You know, it's it's really blocking a lot of common investors to to get a chance, right? Okay, so what's the first one? The Freestyle Saudi Equity Fund. We have the Small and Mid Cap Equity Fund. Uh, again, if you do not know what is a small cap, what is a mid cap, please check out my video where I explained how Saudi Tarawal market is categorized into large, mid, and small cap funds, and examples of what individual stocks are belong to each of these uh, market caps. GCC financial sector. Okay. By the way, you should also by reading through the fund names, you'll also get a sense of whether it's a index fund, whether it's a active fund, whether it's a sectoral fund. For example, this can give you a clear understanding that this is very much focused on the on the small cap and mid cap. So this will be high risk but high return kind of a fund. GCC financial sector. It's can give you give you the sense that this is a thematic sector thematic fund or based on one theme which is finance so it it will be majorly cons- comprising of banks and you know financial companies and l- lending companies right let me also quickly show you one example of a mutual fund right so let's go to the sab option okay so let's go to the saudi sab invest saudi equity fund it might be a bit difficult to get like a lot of good information but the first portal where you should always get how to is the tarawal website right so let me filter for fund manager and i'll select sab invest i'll go for the equity class i will see saudi equity fund here let me deep dive into it 
it should load it should give you another all the quarterly reports how the nav has been performing over the last few years what the uh, five year 10 year performance has been okay so tip, generally it's on the one of the all time highs at the moment it peaked around 2022 it went down a bit by 20% more than 20 percent 30 percent and now it's again in along one of the peaks anyway so where i would highly recommend you is to go to this quarterly reports in the financial reports right fact sheet is also interesting so if you click on the latest quarter fact sheet it'll give you like what the individual constituents of this mutual fund has been so all right so this is giving you how the performance has been over the last five ten years since inception whether it's beating the benchmark There's some statistics around the same i'll be i'll be actually doing a comparison of the different mutual funds in sap invest uh, but this is what i wanted to show you right so this is giving you like the sector allocation so this is almost 30 percent allocation to banks 96 percent is actually in saudi arabia it will give you the standard deviation and it will give you like how the chart has been performing right and you can you can also you know see the individual stock that it's investing so raji has a 10 percent weightage uh, alamar advanced fitness time etc etc so this is how you can get like a in a quick overview of the mutual fund right by filtering into it and if you're interested you can also go through the financial statement to see like how the balance has been how the assets and equity uh, liabilities has been you know who the fund managers are how long have what is their experience how long have they been managing this is it a new team or is, is it like an experienced team um, are they also managing some other funds what is the you know performance of those other funds by the same fund managers right so that will give you like the sense of the reliability and you know the performance which which acts like a good solid uh, first level of filters that i would typically apply and this expense ratio is also an important thing that you should know about 5000 is high and this is also something that you should know about so hope you had like a good view of the mutual funds and if you have any questions let me know thank you